here's a question on that uh, from Cedric Moy. Uh, Mr. Redmond, when you were driving the 917 in tracks like Le Mans, Nürburgring, did you ever think of danger? As many cars of that period had no frontal protection for your feet, legs, in case of an accident. And you'd learn that more with the 9083 later. Yes. But it was the same. Your feet are in front you're of the center line of the wheel. Further forward in the 9083. Right. But did that actually worry you at that point? Because you probably yes. thought if you got in a front end wreck, you were curtained anyway. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, I was always a, a rather nervous driver. Most of my fellow drivers all believed that nothing would ever happen to them. I was the reverse. I believed that something was going to happen to me. <laughs> and so, you know, driving the 917 at Spa, Frankisham, where going into the Master King, we were doing 214 miles an hour, nice. averaging 160 miles an hour over the lap, you know, over the course of a lap. I mean, just unbelievably high speeds, especially at Spa. Because we didn't drive the 917 at the Nürburgring, it wasn't suitable. And the 9083, which was built only for the Nürburgring and the Targa Florio, which it won both. Well, when I first saw the 9083 at Weissach in the Christmas of 1969, um, they took me into, go, the engineers took me into corner. Hey, Redmond, you would like to see the new 9083? I said, yes. So anyway, in England, in the war, there'd been a famous pilot called Douglas Barder. Well, Douglas Barder lost his legs before the war in an aircraft accident and he flew Spitfires in the war with false legs. And he was shot down over Germany, and after he'd escaped twice from the prison camps, they took his legs away, so that stopped that. <laughs> so I got in the 9083 without any front bodywork, and I went, ah, because your legs were in front of the front wheels from about here forward, and there was nothing there. So I got out of the car, and I said, uh, Edmund, what do you think of the new 9083? I, um, I said, I think it's a very good car for Douglas Bader. <laughs> <laughs> I then had to explain who Douglas Bader was, and they weren't amused, I can tell you. Don't you just they love were. his German accent when he talks about Herr Bott and some of the other Porsche engineers? He has this wonderful English-bred German <laughs> accent, which we love. Yeah. So we're well, not trying to offend anybody, you know, of course. Before all this, in the March of 1969, I get a call from Weissach. Renin, you'll come and test the new 917. Well, there were ten Porsche factory drivers at that time. Six Germans, three English and one Swiss. So I thought, why do they want me living in England when they've got six <laughs> German heroes living near, ready to die for the fatherland? So I said, I'll call you back in 30 minutes. And please be sure to call Herr Edmund. So I called Joe Siffert in Switzerland, my co-driver. I said, Seppi, have you tested the new 917 yet? He said, no, no, Brian, he said, we let the others find out what breaks first. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't go. And Kurt Ahrens tested at Wolfsburg, the Volkswagen test track. He aquaplaned off the track, under the barrier, it Cut broke in half, into. and he went down the track, strapped in the back half. Yeah, and Willie Cowson had a similar accident. Did he? I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I think Willie <laughs> uh, took one in too. In, so, in the answer, you know, yes, at Spa Frankishorm in particular, the night before the race, I never slept. I, I'd lie there, perspiration running down my head and just thinking, tomorrow I'm dead. That's all I thought. <laughs> Gosh.